Thank you for coming along. Um, Franchising is actually very simple. The truth is, when people ask me, I believe almost anyone can do it, and it works. But like most things in life, it's knowing how to do it. And what I'm going to do over these next few minutes is run through a weekend workshop in 30 minutes to give you an overview of the sorts of things you need to understand. The truth is, in the late 1986, Harvard did a large study on, build, on businesses. And what they found was of the number of businesses that start every year, on average, you know, someone has a concept, an idea, and this is where the tree idea is. You plant the seed, you've got a thought, I want to start a business, I think it should be like this or that. And then you reach the second stage where you actually experiment. You find actually there are customers. The third stage is where you're actually making a profit. And you probably get to the fourth stage where you're employing staff, but you know, you're still on working in the business. You're already trapped in it. And that's the situation where most people don't get beyond in a business. Uh, the Harvard study found that to get to the next stage five, where you're actually leveraging, where you're delegating the, ra the roles and you're able to actually take a, a situation work on the business and be more creative, takes 18 years. But in their final paragraph, they said one way of reducing this time frame dramatically is by franchising. So my, my role this morning is to show you how you can do that. If you're looking at franchising a business, no doubt you've got a lot of thoughts in your minds. Different questions you all have. Will it work for me? Is my business suited? Should I license? Should I franchise? At this point, I might just ask a question, actually, just to get a bit of an idea here. How many of you here are actually in business? Would you like to put your hands up? You're in business, you've got a business? How many people work more than 40 hours a week in their business? You can be honest, put your hand up, yeah, 50. Yeah, you know, when I, do a, I did, a, I did a, um, a presentation recently to about 150 people, and I think that probably 25% of those did more than 80 hours a week. The reality is when you look at how much time you spend working on your business at home, on the internet, over the weekend, it adds up. Is that why you had the dream of a business? I think not. You imagined holidays in the tropics and all sorts of things like that, get a nice boat, but you never get there. So this is going through the process of how you do it. I, I've been in franchising for 30 odd years, as Tracy men mentioned, in a number of roles, franchisee, franchisor, consulting and so on. Had a number of other businesses outside of franchising. And that, I've been pretty privileged because I've seen lots of different examples and case studies. And this is what I share with people in business. I've uh, had some fantastic businesses, I've had some absolute lemons where I've lost a lot of money. And it's sharing those experiences. My goal is to help you, if you want to franchise, to avoid the mistakes that people make and continue to make because of, unfortunately, lack of knowledge. It's as simple as that. If we don't know, then you know, we make the mistake. So when you talk to people about franchising, the commonly held view is it's all about the documentation and it's all about the product. Now, I'm not denigrating those, those are important, but frankly, if you've got the right systems, the right people, and the right peripherals, then you can create a successful business. Why the lots of hamburger business? Every year I do another pizza business, another coffee bar. Why, when there's so many? It's very simple. They have a point of difference, they do things well. There are always businesses out there, we see them, they get tired and they drop off. Your opportunity is where those people aren't exploiting the market and probably today I'm seeing the rate of change. We all hear about how rapidly business is changing and it's absolutely true. We're just redoing our website only 15 months after we redid it last time. You know, we used to think it had a five year life cycle. Everything in business is becoming quicker. So the people are on the pulse. If you're into, into, if you're into the future and you're able to look beyond tomorrow, then you're the people who are the business of the future. And that's where opportunities are. So it's understanding, it's not these core aspects, it's the peripheral. So when you look at franchising, one of the big mistakes that people make across the board is really just thinking it's a numbers game. It's not a numbers game, it's not just about the money. The key is it is about the people. You think about relationships you have and family and business. It's the people that make the difference. It's the people you know and the people and how they respond, how they work and so forth. So it's important to understand that. Um, so if you're in a business and you want to grow it, actually in franchising you've got two businesses. This is not commonly understood but you've got the franchisee business and then on the other side you've got the franchise or business. So you're going to, what you're going to do is split your business in two, add some bits here and there and I'll show you why you actually cut some things off because most businesses are too complicated. 
This is a process that started off in the 1990s as 21 steps. It became distilled down to seven, and then seven years ago, we cut it down to four. However you go about growing or franchising your business, I really recommend you follow this process. And I'm very happy to share this information with you. Um, it really is important to go through one step at a time, and our, our philosophy is broken down into 28 little elephant bites. If you follow that process religiously, you will reach the end, you'll have a successful business, whether you franchise or not. We see people grow their businesses working through this system without actually going to franchise. They decide that they're doing well enough as they are or they get bought out. The question mark is, is your business franchisable? If you'd like to get an idea of that, you've got a brochure. If you'd like to open the brochure in there, there's a form called, is my business suitable? Um, it's got 10 questions which you just tick the boxes according to yes or no's. I won't expect you to do that now because it's time we can't afford. But if you'd like to complete that and hand it in, then what I'll do is give you a free report, which we'll write, we'll send to you in the next couple of days, with a lot of data, information, and background about franchising, and that's for free, you're welcome to that. But also, what I'll do, every form I get in, I will actually pay for a woman to spend a day being trained in how to start her own business in Africa. That's part of our contribution of helping business grow, and I think, you know, we all live in a global world. We like to see us sharing our resources, and I uh, firmly believe that's the way for the future for all of us. A couple of my, uh, our members who work through our processes, Sandra and Simon Allars, came to us about three years ago in Melbourne. They got a mobile massage business which looks after people who are terminally ill. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful business, they're beautiful people. They work through our franchise system and in a year they grew their business 260% before they even franchised. They improved their website, their marketing, their branding, their timelines, their scheduling, and so on. So it goes to show the sorts of things you can achieve. The major steps is developing your franchise model. And that's when you're going to really sort of look at strategy, understand the big picture of where you're really going, what, uh, what is the potential, what is the opportunity, what are the scopes out there, and how can you respond, and what skills have you got, and what skills do you need? Because getting the jigsaw to pu puzzle together is what's important. We've all got skill sets, but a lot of us try and do things we're not suited to. Better off to get a bookkeeper than struggle doing the bookkeeping when it sort of turns you off like it does to me. So it's important to understand those things. You need to as well look at the, at the overall aspect of the business as far as the roles and responsibilities of people in the business to make sure you're filling the right people in the right spots. So that's critically important. You must do that at the beginning. Don't leave it till the end. So don't rush off and get legals done and disclosure documents and then start backfilling because you're fine, you put the cart before the horse. Um, I, I love simplicity. I believe the answer to life these days is simplicity. Everything's become too complicated, but you can hone it down to simple terms. And Confucius nailed it. We all have a habit, whether it's ego or what we've been taught at school in English language or whatever, we tend to write things in too much detail. Use bullet points, don't write reams. We're not being paid to work, you know, write by the, dollar, by the word. It's actually making it the simpler it is, the better. So one of my clients, Annette Corey, came to us a number of years ago when we were first launching the business. She had a business which she'd only launched herself a year earlier, never been in business before, but she'd learned, she was determined, beautiful lady, and she realized that her franchi first franchisees were run off their feet because what she did was a wedding ceremony and help people with their wedding breakfast, you know, the, the dinner afterwards. And she realized that actually, when we were talking, Annette, isn't this two businesses? So she split it in two and had two franchise groups. And that's often the case with a lot of businesses. When I worked with Jim, he did lawn mowing. I think he follows me today, but now I think he told me the other month that he's got 56 businesses. So that really is taking it to the extremes. Uh, but what he's achieved from franchising is amazing. Um, Annette is a wonderful lady. She's now sold her whole franchise group. She's now become an international fashion designer with her own brand. And all of that was because she's followed systems. Um, when you're looking at branding and marketing, it's important to understand you've got a common denominator, which is your brand, the logo. It's everything you do in your business. Brand isn't just the logo or the name, but also beyond that, you've got a language to communicate. Your avatars or the profile of the people, your demographic, of your customer, the people who eat your hamburgers, they're coming to you because they're hungry. 
your franchisees are coming to you because they're looking for wealth, stability, they're looking to improve their lifestyle. So you can appreciate you're going to speak a different language to one than the other. So it's the two sides of a business. But what you do have um, with those two different personalities, if you like, is a common denominator, which is the yellow box, which is the branding, the literature, the marketing, the copy, and so forth that you've got, got involved. But for the, for the client or the customer, you're actually promoting to satisfy their hunger needs. But when you come to looking for your franchisee, it's their aspirations in life. So totally different words, but you use the common element of your branding. So that branding is the foundation of everything you do. Critically important. Bill McGowan from Fastway Couriers, we're all familiar with Fastway, um, but they are marketing to three different markets. They're marketing for customers who want their packages delivered, franchisees who want a van, and regional franchisees who want to have five or six vans working under them. He sold out to a Japanese freight group recently, early last year, for 120 million. That was just Australia and New Zealand. He's still got Europe. He started off in Napier in New Zealand with two vans. It goes to show what you can achieve. Poolworks is one of my favorite franchise groups. John O'Brien, I've known since before he even founded uh, Poolworks, but his principle was very simple. He bought a business in, in Hornsby in North Sydney, and they had a warehouse and three vans, servicing people's swimming pools, pretty straightforward. What he did, he had a vision, he actually closed the warehouse and started putting all the stock in a retail premises. So the retail premises people would come to, but also needed servicing. The retail premises then became the franchise or for the vans. So he stepped himself up the ladder. The, what he then called the retail hub had six or seven vans underneath. He's now got 400 plus vans and about 70 retail hubs in Australia and New Zealand. In the last three years, he's opened in America. And he's still doing the same role. He'll still come to seminars and workshops. He's still the PR front. But every time he's grown the business, he's, he's trained people to take over his skill sets. And that's the way that you grow in scale. Um, the definition stage is critically important. That's when you start looking at numbers. People say to me, how much should my franchise fee be? Should it be 7% ongoing royalties? Should my initial fee be 50,000 or 10,000? I don't know. There are parameters, there are averages, but frankly, every business is different. You've got to work out the numbers, which you can't start doing until you've got enough body, enough flesh together to put on the bone to determine those, those facts. And you'll learn a little bit more about that in the moment. The territories are critically important, sometimes overrated, more important for the franchisee than for you perhaps, but there are secrets in when it comes to creating territories that can make the difference of maybe having an extra 20, 30 or 40 franchises across the country because you've put a bit of work, a bit of homework in looking at your demographics and make sure you've got your territories right. A lot of people make big mistakes in territories having them too big or too small. But the key to successful franchising comes back to your support. Training, ongoing support, is absolutely the fundamentals of a successful business, just the same as a, as a successful family. You can have a, a happy family with good relationships, relationships through the generations. You spend time together, whether it's at Christmas or Sunday dinner. It's the same with franchisees. You need to spend the time, you need to know them, you need to talk the talk and shake their hands. At the end of the day, it's important to appreciate the financial sides of franchising. It's, it's something that's missed. The reality is, in franchising, um, if you've got profitable franchisees, then the reality is you've probably got a profitable franchisor. If you make your numbers work properly, you're going to have a business that's successful. And if your franchisees are profitable, guess what? They're going to be happy. They're going to be happy and successful. They'll share the word. And your, your business will grow incrementally more likely by referral than by promotion. So it's critically important. And when you look at that, the reality is that getting your margins right is what you determine your early days with your budgeting. But opportunities come along as you grow because you can increase with scale, you can improve, better buying prices, better leverage, improve your product range. I've seen franchise groups sell and their value has been almost entirely in the product they sell, like dog washing, for example. Um, when they, when um, they sold about six or seven years ago, the value of the business was their white labeling, their branded products, rather than the value of the dog washing that they got. The, and they, initially they bought all their cleaning equipment from the supermarket. So they created value. So you look for opportunities. The, um, the franchise circle, or the, the, the money circle, 
is just illustrating how a franchisor provides support and training. The franchisee basically takes that and sells the product and then they pay their fees to the franchisor. So you've got that eternal circle so that everyone's getting their, share, their fair share of the pie. Um, but working with them, I prefer the term franchise partners to franchisees because the reality is you're interdependent. You're working together. The success of one is interdependent on the franchise of the other. And the reality is they are partners in business. And the reason that people like Paul Works have got franchisees who've been with them for 15 and 20 years is because they've got that relationship. And they're coming up with the ideas. John O'Brien will tell you, I interviewed him recently. He said, you know, I've not had a new idea for this business for 15 years. They all come from the franchisees. Imagine the value of 400 people all coming up with innovative ideas of how to improve the business. Quite, it's quite significant. And that's what I love about franchising is you just get those collective minds. And that's why I love the Franchise Council of Australia because the FCA, where the franchisors join together as an industry body, incredibly generous. They will share ideas and information even to their competitors to help you learn better ways to grow the business. There's a, there's a passion for franchising which is almost like a religion. People become really, really rusted on, if you like, to use a John Howard term. Um, and that, that's stimulating. It's great to be in that space and know you're not alone in business. I worked with Jim uh, about 1990, helped him set up and found his state franchisor in Western Australia, which is the model, and found his first 10 franchisees. And I never forget an, an example of something he quoted to me I still share with people today, and the clients I work with often use the principle. He said, he, he said to me, at that time, he had some early software. He was quite, quite new in the space. Um, and he said, you know, we do their invoicing. We do the quotes, because why go and quote for a lawn when you know it's a quarter acre block, it's $30 for the front, $10 for the back. So what we do, we do all the quotes. I don't want my franchisees putting flyers in letterboxes. I don't want them doing bookkeeping. Every hour they want to work, I want them pushing a lawnmower so they're earning money. I can do all the, all the back end. And do you know something? Spec Savers, very, very successful international group, do exactly the same. They do all the back end accounts for their franchisees. Doesn't that give you a message? You know, the reality is for a lot of businesses, that's the way to go. But not necessarily, so don't take it for granted. But it can be really critically important. I mentioned Fastway earlier, a group that we were involved with back in the late 80s was called Red Spot Taxi Trucks. They were in Perth. They were before the days of Couriers Please and Fastway where they would have a central collection area. What they did was deliver it to another. You'd know the model. They had 20 odd utilities, utes, driving around Perth. Very successful, very visible. And then gradually you could see they started dropping off the game. What it was, was the franchisor had sold as many franchises as he could uh, in the area um, with his territories. He'd earned good money, but ongoing he couldn't f afford to support them. He couldn't put a new two-way system in. He couldn't afford to do rebranding because his ongoing royalties he'd calculated too low. So you can give yourself a long-term problem if you don't think down the track and work out your numbers what's going to happen when I stop selling franchises or if the market goes, goes belly, belly up for a little while and I can't recruit any franchisees, how's my cash flow going to look? So it's important to understand that. Territories, as I say, an area which are a bit of a mystery to a lot of people, but the truth is it's not complicated at all. Um, a quick case study, in 1976, a teenager, 17 years of old, age at college, studying finance, together with one of the lecturers, put in $500 that he got from his family. The lecturer put in $500, and they opened a sandwich shop to pay his way through college. After a year of their $1,000, they had $70 left. <laughs> And they said, is it working? Are we wasting our time? And as he quoted later, he said, I was young, ambitious. I didn't know why not. So I said, yes, let's open another one. So what they did was open another one, quite nearby. After two years, it was doing better. The first one was still open, not doing brilliantly. They owned a third, but they did another thing as well. They changed the name from Pete's Subs to Subway. And that's the story of Subway. Um, Fred DeLuca, still involved with the business today, they've got 45,000 outlets around the world, open 2,500 a year. And they're all opened with a container that arrives from the States with everything in it, down to the tiles and so on. They use a concept which we've coined the Olympic rings. 
they opened one area, the one with the blue circle, then nearby they opened another one, and then nearby they opened the black one. Now, why is that such common sense? Because the people in the yellow area had already seen the brand, so they felt familiar, they felt comfortable. And then when the black area opened, that in increased. When they came to Australia, a couple bought the rights for Australia, opened in Perth, Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane, went broke in a year. After that, Subway sent an executive over and they started again doing this, and this is what they do to today, a hub. So they open one outlet, if you prove to be successful, you can have up to seven. But they always build them in clusters, so you've got that familiarity. Does that make a lot of sense? Um, I've had clients who've flown across from Perth to one of our weekend workshops and said, Brian, I'm over here to see a prospective state franchise or for Queensland or someone for the Gold Coast. I said, that's fabulous. I think you should have the weekend workshop and we can talk before you commit yourself to that. And they've realised that actually they should sell franchises in Perth first because trying to spread yourself across the country before you've learned to be a franchisor is a bit ambitious. So it's important to understand that. Some numbers. You know, if you think you can put 10 or 12 into Brisbane, the truth is you can probably put 15 or 20. Extrapolate that across the country when you look at to country areas like Townsville and Mount Isa, you can probably put 150. It's amazing how many outlets you can get if you plan properly and you grow at the right speed and manage it. The design stage is when we get to the nitty gritty operations manuals. Operations manuals and systems really are one of our passions. Um, Prue and I have run this business and, uh, and so forth. Uh, we have a really firm belief that most operations manuals we see today are so woefully out of date, so inadequate, not just because they're too long, but because they're hosted on the wrong platforms. So we have a digitized system in the cloud, very, very simple, where you can upload all your manuals, you can uh, have videos and PDFs and audios and so on, and that's the way to the future, keeping it really simple. Your legal documents, you need to brief your lawyer, you need to know what you're talking about because lawyers aren't business people. They may draft a brilliant document, but the truth is, if they haven't been in business, professional as they are, and I respect them and employ them, obviously retain lawyers, the truth is they don't understand the nuances, which is where we work together to mentor. And I think you need someone to mentor you through that process. Otherwise, you'll end up making inadvertently what could be very, very expensive mistakes. Retail food group in the news for the wrong reasons at the moment, but one of our lawyers about three years ago managed to get one of their franchisees who had nine stores actually out of the system because their, their franchise agreement at Retail Food Group was not enforceable. It had holes in it. The lawyer said to me, I could drive a truck through it. How much money do you think that cost them because they had an agreement that wasn't enforceable? It cost them millions. So if they'd only put the research in at the first point, done it properly, got commercial as well as legal advice, I think they may well have saved themselves a lot of money and a lot of upset franchisees. When you come to launching your business, it's important you do it properly. It's critically important you don't go out there and get too big too quickly. I, I, don't, I don't believe you need to constrain yourself, but your first couple of steps, you need to take time. You need a pilot, someone to be there, be the first franchisee who's going to pressure test. Use those systems so they can really, they see them from a different point of view. They, they come from the other side of the fence. One of our great clients, um, National Drones, is here today. I was just talking to Brad, and he came to me with his partner, Kevin, and said, we want to have 25 in the first two years. I said, wow, that's ambitious. But boy, let's start slowly, quickly, slowly. They, they came to us at Christmas. They started their operations manuals. They came to the Sydney Expo, three months. So they were at an expo. That's how long it took them to get started. And then, woe be, woe be gone, in 18 months they had 19 franchises because they learned the system, the processes, and today they've got a, an amazing business. He just told me they had 180 inquiries in January alone. Why? Because he built the system right to start with. So it's important to understand these processes are critical. One of our clients who actually sold out to a national cleaning group who respected his systems and wanted him to join them he didn't really feel that he had values that were in sync with them. So he said, no, I don't want to sell. They actually came back to him and bought him out for a very attractive figure. So it goes to show. Um, looking at franchising, when you're recruiting your first franchisees, follow a process, make sure you have sufficient information, make sure you're transparent with what you do, with what you tell people, and make sure you do follow those processes and recruit the right sort of people. 
use psychometric testing, use disk profiles or whatever tools you might want, but make sure you just don't, don't, don't really put on franchises on the sense you think they're the right people. They look right. I've employed people, and I'm sure most of you have in the past, you thought were right, but you know what? It's because we empathised. It wasn't because they were good at what they did. Sometimes you want a total opposite to yourself. Someone who's got a totally different view of the world because they have different skills. So moving forward, however you go about growing your business, however you go about franchising, if you follow this process, I guarantee you've certainly got a much higher rate of success um, that you'll probably achieve. And I think you'll find you have a lot less stress and you do it a lot simpler because franchising is simple and anyone can do it. It's just a matter of discipline. So if you want to take what you've got now as a business, grow it and expand it, replicate it into several businesses, um, then that's the opportunities there for you. Um, there isn't time for questions today, but I will be over just behind you on the left on stand B21. You're very welcome to come across there and to ask questions, but also I've got a book. Uh, you're welcome to get a copy of our book. Um, it's available on Amazon, but we have it here free this weekend for people who are here called How to Franchise My Business Simply. You're welcome to a free copy, and it's, it's written entirely for people like yourselves who are researching franchising. Every copy of the book that goes, we will be actually paying for a woman to be trained for a day in running our own business in Malawi and Zimbabwe, so that's our contribution. If you're interested in Microloan Foundation, we've got brochures as well, and if you're interested in systems, we've got our electronic in the cloud system. So that's a summary of, uh, of, of what I've really got to share with you now. I hope you found it helpful. And uh, good luck in franchising, good luck in life and business, and thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.